Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, I want to talk about namespaces. You really don't need them, but you should know about them. And you'll see when they come in handy. And um, if you have to use, let's say, um, Kubernetes at work, it's good to know that oh, they're going to put different resources into namespaces, and you like, want to be you want you're going to want to know namespaces so you can navigate and find those resources. But in your day-to-day -day uses, like using your own cluster and that sort of stuff, you don't need namespaces. And so let's jump right in. I'm at the Kubernetes home page. I'll click on documentation. And then I'm going to click on concept and overview, and then working with Kubernetes. And then here you see namespaces. And so if we read it, it say, in Kubernetes, namespaces provides a mechanism for isolating groups of resources within a single cluster. So you have one cluster, and you sort of want to group the pods and deployments and all these other stuff under or put them in a group and give them a name, and that is what a namespace is. Names of resources need to be unique within a namespace. So it's just saying, so when you name things, as we usually do, um, you know, services, pods, de deployments, that sort of thing. Those names have to be unique within the name state, but not across namespace. So you can use the same name or reuse the same name if you're in a different namespace, right? Because namespace acts like the parent or umbrella for those set of resources. So namespace scoping is applicable only for namespace objects. So again, it doesn't apply to everything. Um, so we'll see some of the things that apply to, and so like deployment services, sort of and not for cluster-wise objects such as storage class, nodes, persistent volumes, or anything else. So when you create a persistent volume, you don't create a namespace. You don't say, oh, this is only for this namespace, or you have a storage class, or the nodes that make up your Kubernetes clusters. Those are not available, you know, scoped to a namespace. So when to use a name? Use multiple namespaces. Namespaces are intended to use an environment where many users spread across multiple team or projects. So that is why I said that so for your day-to-day -day uses on your local machine and other stuff, you don't need to know anything about namespaces or worry about it or create any, and you shouldn't. For cluster with a few to tens of users, you should not need to create or think about namespaces at all. And so it drives in the drive home the point again that if you're using your own Kubernetes cluster on your desktop, you're a single user. And even in the cases when you have a small team of just a few users, you probably don't need namespaces. Start using namespaces when you need to um, need the features they provide. Namespaces provide a scope for names. Names of resources need to be unique within namespaces, but not across, as mentioned that before. Namespaces cannot be nested inside of one another, which means you cannot have a parent namespace and then another child namespace within that. Right, so it's a flat structure. And so um, it tells you your name to the way to define cluster resources being most usable. It mentions that before, right? It is not necessary to use namespaces. You know, it's for order, it says it's not necessary to use name multiple namespaces to separate slightly different resources, such as a different um, version of the same software. Instead, use labels for that. So if you're going to be rolling out an application, a version 1 and you get version 1.1 1 .1 or version 2 or version 10, it doesn't matter. Don't use a different namespace just because you have a different version of the software. Use labels to, to, to um, tag that there's a different version. Okay. Now, there are some namespaces that come with the Kubernetes cluster. Um, there's a default namespace. And without you doing anything, as we will see from the document, um, when we go to create namespaces, that all the things that we've been creating automatically goes into the default namespace. So when you don't say which namespace to use, it goes into the default namespaces. There's some other resources and stuff that's managed by Kubernetes itself, and those are in these, um, creating these namespaces. So you have a cluster, and we know that there are things that are inside the cluster, and there are things that are outside the cluster. So things that are outside the cluster would be like your persistent storage. So this is going to be your net, NFS, iSCSI, all this other stuff that we talk about. But then the things that are in your cluster, like the resources that you use to create pods, you know, CPU, memory, and stuff, those are prov provided by the nodes that run in your cluster. And those do not get divided up by namespaces. 
The other thing that is in your cluster that don't get divided up by names is like permissions, right? Now we didn't talk about permission and we don't need to. Again, this is for multi-tenant cluster, you know, you have a Kubernetes cluster, you have multiple users, blah, 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 blah. So we don't need any of that, so we're not gonna worry about it. So those are the things that are not in namespaces. So the other thing though, that is in your cluster are the namespaces themselves. So how does this work? Well, think about, um, when you create pods, deployment, service, ingress control, you know, config, max, secrets, all that stuff that we've been creating so far, where are they stored? Well, it's inside of the default namespace. We didn't have to do anything. It just automatically put it in the default namespace because like I say, you get a default namespace for free when you create your cluster. Not it costs anything, but just it's come by default. And if you don't see where something goes, when you create it, it goes into that default namespace. But you can create namespaces at will. So you can might create an alpha namespace, you may create a beta namespace. But remember, for day-to-day -day use, most people won't need to worry about namespaces. But let's say you do need namespaces. Let's say you create an alpha namespace. Now you can create the same thing, pods and da da da. And remember, they can have the same name in within namespaces because names do not only need to be unique within a namespace, but not across namespace. And so, of course, the beta namespace can have its own set of things. Now, each namespace doesn't have to have the same thing, right? Like, if your beta namespace doesn't need config map or ingress control, then you wouldn't create it. Similarly, if your alpha namespace doesn't need secrets, then you wouldn't have any in your alpha namespace. So that's all there is to it in terms of trying to illustrate what namespaces are. Now, let's jump to the command line and see how you create namespace and put resources within the namespace. So I have my cluster up. I'm using a kind cluster. I'm using K9, and you can see that here. In the very last video on Kubernetes, which I'll be posting in just a few days before the, new, the year ends, what I'll show you is a few tools you can use for managing or you know checking out the resources in your Kubernetes cluster. I have my K9 up, and what I'm doing, if uh, you don't know how to use K9, if I go to K9, I like colon, and definitely you can type help here, but I want namespaces. You can type out the same, the full thing, or there's a shortcut like NS. So this is showing me all the namespaces that are defined in my K9 cluster. And this is just by default when I start up the cluster. It has the default namespace, you know, cube node least, cube node plus, cube system. And it has this one local path storage. Again, that was added because I enabled the plugin for in K9 for local storage. Don't worry about that if you don't see it. Just depending on which type of cluster you use, you may see different things. But we, we saw from the documentation that some of these cube ones would be there. Okay, so let's just now create a directory um, for um, the work we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And so the first thing I wanna do before um, creating any um, user VS code or anything like that, creating a pod, I wanna show you that oh, there are two ways to create a namespace. So you can use the kubectl command. So there you go. And I can say uh, create, and then of course the type of resource I want to create. And so namespace is one of them um, that you can use with the create command. And I can just give it a name. So I can say development, for example. And that's it. And you can see it says namespace development created. And if we look up here, we should see that namespace was created. And if I go down to it in my K9 and I select it, this is the namespace. You can see there's sort of nothing in that namespace. Okay, so there are no pods running in this namespace. If I look for a service, there are no services running in this namespace. There's nothing. I simply just created that namespace. Okay, so let me go back to list all my namespaces. So that's one way in which you could create a namespace. And now you have a namespace created. Now you can then create resources within that namespace. So for example, let's do VS Code. Start it up, and of course the directory is going to be empty. So we have a namespace already. So let's do this. Let's add a file, and then I'm going to see my pod or pod one. So I want to create a pod, Kubernetes pod, and then I'm calling my pod dash one. So we use nginx, and I'm going to just go put this um, expose port 80. Okay. Now if I were to just run this right now, it would just create my pod in the default namespace. So if I go back here, 
and I do kubectl apply and then minus s f and then k is s you'll see it create one pod and it's in the default namespace so if I go up here and I select that I should see my pod 1 is running there so I'll go back to namespaces and I'll select my development namespace and pod and notice that there's nothing running there so if I go here and I copy my file now in my pod 2 what I'm going to do is put it in another namespace now on the meta so when you put you want to specify the namespace that this um, resource should be created in you have to put it in this meta section so I can put it as a force entry here I like putting it after name so I'll say namespace and you can see this come up with this documentation and say it's always a string it defined the space which in each name must be unique and all this other stuff that's fine and so I'll say development that's the name of the namespace I created and if I go back to my command line and now I rerun kubectl again notice the first one is unchanged but part two was the second file I didn't give it a different name <laughs> so it totally said that oh, oh my part one was created but notice my part one was created in this development namespace so completely different namespace so let me show you why um, you want to be careful with that is let's say let's clean up and let me zoom in here for example let's say I'm using kubectl only and I say get pods like this notice I have a pod running here for um, you know just over almost two, two minutes but if I do get pods minus n for namespace and I said development I run notice that um, I have another pod with the same name but running for much shorter time and that makes sense because I created this pod after okay so this is how you specify which namespace to use so by default if you don't specify a namespace it uses um, the default namespace all right so that's how you would get to this so I show you how to create a namespace from the command line I show you how to add something to that namespace so um, let's do another example now where we create the namespace in a YAML file so why YAML? it doesn't matter what the file name is and so the way you, you're going to do this now if I type namespace I would expect to get some help from my plugin but it doesn't have any help for that template so I have to type it so it's going to be API version and this is version 1 and if you remember kind and we can say that kind is a namespace and then we also have meta and under meta we have name and we'll give it our namespace so we'll just call it test and see test group or something like that that's fine and so that's all there is to create a namespace from a YAML file and so if I now go back and let's just say I copy this file I paste it and then I call it part 3 but this time I'm actually going to give it and so I'll do that and call it part 3 okay and this time I wanted to go into the test group namespace so if I go back to the command line and let's just do zoom out back a little bit clean up and then I do kubectl and then apply and then enter you'll see that all um, two of my files that positive have to change because they're in the um, thing but oh I did not create the namespace for it so um, anyway namespace test group was created um, and then it says this is not wrong so at the time I ran that file it didn't have the namespace is created because of the order so let me just rerun it again and notice this time the pod was created so the only thing you want to make sure of is that your pod is created your namespace is created before the resource you of course you're trying to put in that namespace but now I have another namespace and a pod 3 created in it and so let's zoom out a bit and again if I do kubectl get pods get pods you can see I have pod 1 running in default namespace I can then go check in my namespace development I have this other pod running there slightly shorter time and then I can go check the test group namespace and there we go and 
as you can see, part three is running in that namespace. So that's all it is. Namespace is just used for isolating. There's no magic to it. So that's it. Please let me know if you have any questions or problem with this. Um, side note, I have done some work on the playlist and renamed them and regroup the videos so it should be a lot cleaner. Um, so I might actually just delete the go on the run playlist because all the files in there are now you know, grouped into individual section playlists. So you probably don't need to go on the run with a hundred and something videos anyway, because that's going to be confusing to anyone. Just probably better to just leave the individual section playlist, but we can discuss. Um, if you've made it this far and you like what you see and you enjoy the videos, thanks for watching. Um, please consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber. If you're a subscriber, um, thanks for coming back and give me a subscription. I appreciate it and look forward to seeing you in just a few days. I'm going to sh show you some tools that you can use to manage your Kubernetes cluster just before we finish everything here with Kubernetes. All right, see you soon. Take care, bye, and be safe.